So I'm not a huge fan of Bethesda's. I think they make some cool video games, but I'm just not a fan of their business practices. Not all of them, but some of them. I'm only mentioning that because as far as I'm concerned, if you're a hardcore fanboy, your opinion of whatever you're a fanboy of is not valid. And so if you have a scale hardcore fanboys are on one side, the haters are on the other side, I think I'm actually closer to a hater than a fanboy. With that being said, Taking a huge shit on Starfield is great for business right now if you're an influencer or some sort of content creator. Now that's not to say anyone shitting on this game is automatically doing that for views. Of course not. Some people genuinely don't like the game and that's their opinion. And to be honest with you, if you have hands on with a video game, that's all that matters. What I have to say shouldn't have an impact on how you feel about your personal experience with a video game. You should be able to decide that on your own, rather than getting influenced by what other people have to say. However, there's a lot of people shitting on Starfield just for the views, so let's be completely honest about it. And the thing is with this console war fanboy fuckery, there's a lot of clicks on it. When you notice mainstream media starting with these clickbait console war bullshit headlines, you know it's generating a lot of clicks. So I've been playing a lot of Starfield. I actually got to play some of it before it actually came out thanks to a friend of mine. It's a space Fallout game. If you would imagine what Fallout in space would be like, Starfield wouldn't be far from that. It would be pretty damn close to how you imagined it. But of course, not just all of the good things, but also some of the cons. Pretty aggressive texture pop-in is one of them. Loading screens. Kind of floaty combat. The truth is, a lot of people thought they should have moved on from the Creation 2 engine a long time ago. Visually speaking, I think this is actually one of Bethesda's nicest looking games. However, while it can look very amazing, at times it can also look a little aged. Lower resolution textures or models. NPCs can also be a crapshoot. Sometimes they look fine, other times they look like something pulled straight out of Fallout 76. And that can be a little bit jarring when we have seen what is possible nowadays, right? Loading screens. There's a lot of talk about that today. Let me just quickly touch on that. The only time you'll get a loading screen when you're exploring a planet is when you enter a dungeon or if you're fast traveling to a different zone. On average, I'm probably hitting about 8 loading screens per planet. We're not counting city hubs or anything like that. First planet, for example, I think I landed on 3 different parts of the planet, which is 3 loading screens, and then I think there are about 4 or 5 dungeons. There's plenty of buildings, big and small, that you can enter without having to face a loading screen. It's only these dungeons, which are usually these pretty big expansive areas, you know, very similar to what you would find in Fallout 4. It's essentially the same exact blueprint, just on a larger scale. Now, as I discussed in the other video, walking around everywhere on a planet, it gets old. It most certainly does. I wish there was a better solution, whether it means getting a little buggy, having unlimited fuel in your booster, I don't know. The game isn't perfect. We touched on a couple of its cons, I also did so in another video I put up. Now let's talk about some of the pros. But before I do, if you're a Fallout fan and you're watching this, you know as well as I do, in your eyes, everything I just said is irrelevant. It's not getting in the way of your enjoyment of this game because you feel not only are the other parts strong enough to balance things out, they're mutant strong. And in your eyes, it's a small sacrifice, a small price to pay in order to enjoy the goodness. Things that you believe this company does better than any other developer out there. I have a short story for you. I was playing Fallout 4. I stumbled in this very nondescript building, falling apart like every other structure in that game. So I'm inside, I'm looking for things to loot, items of value, looking through desks, looking through lockers. My inventory is probably already at maximum. And while I'm digging around, I faintly hear something in the background. It sounds like an old PA system, an announcement about something Boston. The game is in New England, so that's not a shocker, but I couldn't quite make it out. I just caught the tail end. Boston. And as a Bostonian, I'm now trying to spend special attention so I don't miss the next announcement, if and when it comes. I'm making my way down to another floor, and here comes another announcement. Sister Ida to the principal's office, something of that nature. And in that very moment, like a ton of Nuka-Cola, I realized I was standing in my old high school, Don Bosco Technical. Sister Ida was a teacher there. You even get to fight the bear mascot. That's why people love these games, their ability to tell story. And as far as lore is concerned, they went above and beyond in terms of New England lore. 
You can't just spend a few hours with a map and a history book to know that Sister Ida is a teacher at Don Bosco Technical. That's all I'm gonna say. Their ability to craft a believable world and then fill it with charming NPCs and companions. Bad guys that really get under your skin. They're like master craftsmen when it comes to this. I'd be the first to admit, I wish the game didn't have any loading screens, but as far as where these loading screens are going to take me, I feel it's a small sacrifice to pay. And that's just how I feel. And this is coming from a guy that's not a big fan of this company. I feel no matter what your bias is or whatever your hate may or may not be, I feel an honest person still gives credit when it's due. And again, while there might be quite a few things to not like about Starfield, to act like everything is shit, their exploration is shit, all the stories you come across are shit, all the characters are shit, I mean, that's just so disingenuous. In my opinion, there's a lot to like about the game. But here's the best part. Almost anybody can try it for themselves. There's no experience better than hands-on experience. And while I would feel for PlayStation fans, especially if they're Fallout fans too, Guys, most of you can play it. Yes, you're going to have to pay for a month of Game Pass Ultimate, but you can play Starfield on the cloud starting the 6th of September, which you can play on almost anything so as long as you have good internet. If you have the right hardware or software, you could probably even play with a DualSense. 